Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first of the bonus episodes of Pikmin. So, the remaining five episodes following this bonus episode will be of a similar structure. This first one's going to be a little more unusual. First off, I'm going to show you the menus, because I'm going to show you things that you, you may not have seen before. So, here's the main menu, and we can basically, we can choose a ship's log. We can choose a certain day on it. I've got on the left here my actual file, and on the right here my practice pair of files. But you can use plus or minus to choose a specific day. This is very good for if you fuck up a couple of days in your row, row and you're like, actually, day 8 was where it all really started going downhill. Let's restart from day 8. It will not save necessarily at this point. When you can finish a day, you'll have always the opportunity to save. So, day 8 is important. We're going to go back to the impact site on day 8. Stop saying day 8, Doctor. So here, as ever, there's quite a lot of like potential level up, leveling up, uh, like rearing of Pikmin we can do, but we're really here for one thing. There is a, in inverted commas, enemy that only appears on the impact crater on, from day 8 onwards, on an even numbered date. So day 8, day 10, day 12, blah 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 blah, going forwards. Oh, I really didn't have any flower Pikmin at this point, did I? Oh, hello, um, what are you called? Uh, iridescent flint beetle. Um, so, we come up here. Here it is. So this fella that's wandering around is the Mamuta. And it's unusual in that it is an entirely passive enemy. If you move around, it will often occasionally turn and look at you, but it doesn't do anything. Which makes me always feel a bit bad for what I'm about to do. Once you start attacking it, then it attacks you. And the Mamuta is quite unusual. That's its attack. It pounds Pikmin into the ground, but quite unusually, unlike any other enemy that plants Pikmin, it pounds them into the ground, but it flowers them. Um, so it can actually almost be useful for leveling up your Pikmin to some extent that you can encourage. Basically, so much of the impact crater is about helping you build up for, from um, shitty disasters. And actually, the Mamuta can be very useful um, by letting you... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, you never feel really good about fighting the Mamuta. Um... But yes, it can be quite good for if you take on the Mamuta with a large amount of Leaf Pikmin, you can actually let it flower all of them, and as long as you can pluck them quick enough, bloody handy. And that's actually all I wanted to show off with the Mamuta. Our next enemy appears after day 8 on the Impact Crater. Impact Crater? Impact Site! Fucking too much Metroid Prime. Um, but appears on odd numbered days. So, let's return here on day 9. So here it will offer me the opportunity to save. If I choose not to, then you can either continue from previous save, which will reload this day, or we can continue onwards. I mean, do the next two days without actually um, saving at all, because we're going to go back to the impact site, as I said, on day nine. So this time we're going to do a slightly unusual thing again, and we are going to take out 100 blue Pikmin. And there's a very specific reason for this. The boss we're about to fight can fuck up any other kind of Pikmin, but Blue Pikmin are entirely 100, 1000% immune to this boss. So I am going to try and next them up a little bit, but it's not really a requirement because they can take absolutely zero damage from the boss, so it's not like it is a problem. Uh, there we go, good. Oh my god, even more nectar, wonderful. Well, I think that's the vast majority of us are sorted. Um, oh, getting people up this slope is always really annoyingly challenging. Fuck off, iridescent twat. So I'm actually going to throw everyone up there. Speeder, please. So, with everyone up here, exactly the same place as we fought the Mamuta, enter... Gulix, who can apparently hurt me. Um, oh, bugger me. But, yes, he's made of water. Um, and consequently, any Pikmin entering his kind of membrane zone will drown, and it will hurt me as well. But blue Pikmin are completely immune to it because it's water. So if we position it so they all attack on him, they're all just attacking his little membrane thing there. And so as long as we stay away from Gulix, we're absolutely fine. Any so any Pikmin falling into that area would literally like drown, except for the fact that blue Pikmin are immune to drowning. And it's day nine, it's the earliest you can fight Gulix, so it's pretty likely that you will have blue Pikmin by this point. 
And yeah, you can just, as long as your eyes stay away from him, he'll only move towards me. Basically, the yellow membrane attacks, the blue membrane protects. So you need to work on the blue membrane, but with 100 blue Pikmin, pretty straightforward. And he dissolves into a particle effect that really harms the, the frame rate and various um, thingies. Pellets. And that's Gulix, very strange as well. We have one final one to take on, who is much, 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 much more threatening than the other two. So let's head to the Distant Spring on or before day 15. So, if I were to say to you, what are the four elements of the Pikmin game? You would tell me fire, water, explosives, and what is the fourth? Well, the fourth element of Pikmin is only present in one enemy. This boss we're about to fight, the Smoky Prog. Um, oh, do I need to go and make that bridge first? Okay, that's fine. Um, yes, the Smoky Prog is the only po Pokemon um, creature in the game which is poison type. As in, it's, it's touch poisons Pikmin. This is not Pikmin 2. White Pikmin do not yet exist. Therefore, there is no counter to poison type. It will just kill your Pikmin. There is literally nothing you can do about it. It's terrible. Um, and yet they they made an enemy which is which is poison type. Um, and we're about to fight it. As such, I'm going to do a little bit of preparation to make sure we're ready for the Smoky Prog. Um, there is one relatively good way of dealing with him, and it involves explosives. Um, so I'm basically going to prepare three major teams to take on the Smoky Prog. Um, we'll set them working on that. I could possibly set more of them working on that. 69. Oh, was this after I'd suffered some casualties here that I've got some zoomy boys? No, did I actually take 69 Pikmin out? Oh, no, I actually took these yellows out already. Um, right. Can we... The answer is no, probably not. Can we sneak past them and get bomb rocks? No, I suspect we can't. So... The Smoky Prog is unusual if I leave these guys there while that bridge gets worked on. Um, if we come over here, we'll sh I'll show you the Smoky Prog's egg. This is the Smoky Prog's egg. I don't know if punching actually does anything to it. Let's find out. No, it doesn't. Um, you attack it and you break it open and the Smoky Prog will attack. The Smoky Prog attacking is very strange. If I bring up the map, he will make a direct line from where he is to your onions. And from there, he will go about his wicked foul business. Not only is he very dangerous against Pikmin, he has a very unfortunate aura. The Smoky Prog, just by being there, will uproot Pikmin. So any Pikmin that plants in the ground, he will uproot. And upon doing so, he'll also proceed to kill them. Uh, so even Pikmin you have buried in the ground are not safe in the Smoky Prog. The only place that is truly safe is the Onion. He's a very dangerous boss. You will need 100 Pikmin to fight him, and you will lose the vast majority of them. He's a hard enemy. I would argue, he, in a way, he's harder than Emperor Bold Blacks, because if you're careful, like I kind of was, you can fight Emperor Bold Blacks using Bomb Rocks and Red Pikmin carefully, and you cannot lose that many Pikmin. You will lose Pikmin against the Prog. You will lose a crap ton of Pikmin. As such, I've devised the three squadrons approach to, well, four squadrons technically, to fight the Smoky Prog. So, now that's open, we are just about ready to proceed. I want to take out this Wally Hop because he's in the way. <gasps> what the fuck is he doing here? But I didn't destroy his egg. <sighs> oh, fucker doodle bollocks. Oh god, that's horrifying. Right, we're gonna have to take this very carefully. Because he's already here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna restart the day. Actually, I'm just gonna go straight to the next day because I am not ready to fight him on You can see, he's horrifying. He's a fucking freak. We're gonna deal with him tomorrow. <laughs> also, Kind of scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Smoky Prog still does now. Um, kind of to this day. Um, at least here now we've we've opened that bridge, which means we can be ready to go tomorrow. Apparently, so that punching I did absolutely freeze the Smoky Prog from his egg. And you can fucking see what I mean of the... I went back, didn't I? Well, our work in undoing that bridge has been entirely defuncted. 
defuncted. That's not a word. Um, right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to defeat that Wally Harp, reopen the bridge, and get ready to roll. What the fuck be wrong with that bridge? I guess some of the things started un unbuilding it and didn't get very far. And the Wally Hop in question is not present, so that actually does really help our case. So, look there and look there. Those are our two really kind of key targets at the moment here. So they are what Demolition Squadrons Alpha and Beta will be focusing on. Yes, I've named them. Um, so, once they've deposited a bit, so we want to withdraw, I would say, 20 Yellow Pikmin. These guys are going to die. If everything goes well and properly, they will die. But my god, are they going to die in the most heroic way possible. Um, because they're going to die sacrificing themselves to protect us from the horror that is the Smoky Prog. Um, so, let's gather as many bomb rocks as we can. That's a good number here, at least. As long as no one gets trapped underneath that skull. So almost everyone's got bomb rocks other than number five or six. So I can gather a few more, I think, depending on whether that other one is there. So here is the position for Demolition Squad Alpha. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You will notice. That sounds bad, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, you will notice Demolition Squad Alpha is positioned perfectly between... If I look at the map, between the prog egg there, and our base there. The smoky prog will have to pass them. And based on that, you can probably guess where I'm going to try and position Demolition Squad Beta. Um, if everything goes well, we we will almost not encounter the smoky prog until, until he's damn, damn near destroyed. Um, because here, so now we want the second batch of demolition men probably about here. Let's check on the map again. It is kind of annoying almost that the map reorients itself to, um, to whichever direction Alma is facing. It doesn't really have a north as such. Right, so if we're there, so the prog egg is there. Straight line from there to the onions. Oh, I should want to actually bring these. <gasps> Fucking what? The fuck happened there, guys? Come the fuck on. Oh, he's been drawn towards us. Oh. <laughs> Man, this game does not want me to have an efficient fight against the Smoky Prog. So the moment those guys dropped in the water, they had a bad time. Fuck. And we that's all of all we've got for Bomb Rocks um, on this entire map. So that's real bad. Fucking Demolition Squadron. You just... Oh. Right, fuck it, we're going to have to fight this guy the old school way then. Right, let's bring out a lot of reds. So these are Combat Squadron. They're pretty fight. fierce. Uh, we'll bring out 80 of them. And we'll hold these guys behind Demolition Squadron. The much depleted Demolition Squadron. But we want these guys to only come into play when Demolition Squadron are already done. And then we want to take out, finally, Suicide Squadron. These guys don't have a great time. Uh, these guys, it's their job to activate the prog egg and then run the fuck away. Apparently I've learned you can do this with a couple of fists and... Oh. God, I'm so annoyed about that. Um, we whistled them off and we... Oh, I'm almost tempted to restart the day again, but I've restarted this day so many times. Fuck it. Restart the day again. It's a short bonus episode. I really want to do this properly. Right, now I think we're ready. We've got the prog egg there. Got Demolition Squad Alpha, Demolition Squad Beta there. These guys are going to go safely back in the Onion because they're just more trouble than they're worth, quite frankly. And now, we want to withdraw... I don't like the way that Wally Hop's manoeuvring itself, but hey. We want to withdraw Combat Squadron of 80 Reds. Why do they run towards me every time? Every time, I guess that fucking Wally Hop gets too close. Right. Am I going to restart again? I'm going to restart again. I'm going to kill that Wally Hop. You know what? Fuck it. I can, I can make this I can make this bonus episode last as long as I fucking want. Right. 
Here we are, at long last. The board is set, and the pieces are moving. Combat squadron lies in wait. 80 strong red Pikmin ready to go. Demolition squadrons Beta and Alpha are in position, forming an impenetrable iron curtain between the Smoky Prog and the onions that we seek to protect so much. Finally, Suicide Squadron with me have the unenviable task of waking the bastard from his sleep. Go. And may the goodwill of all men go with you. That means all attack, you fuckers. Here we go. Introducing the Smoky Prog. So he's a freak, and he has an aura, which, as you will notice, kills Pikmin instantly. Like, anyone that's caught in that aura will instantly die. Oh no, he's... Right, come on. Yes, look. Be distracted by Demolition Squadron. Look at them! Yes, hit them, man! Hit them! No, don't hit! No, come on, me, you fucks! Oh, okay, that's not great. Right. Hopefully Demolition Squadron Beta will do better. I'm not relying on it, but... There we go. Come on. Throw your bombs, man. Oh, okay, we've done we've done a good amount of damage to him already. He, ha he has like a th half of his health down. Brilliant. Right. Let's throw a couple more blokes at him. And then basically all we can do really is throw them on him from now. And he does that roar occasionally. Basically, we can throw guys on him, but you will see how quickly they die. Look at the number in the bottom right, the middle of the two numbers. We've got him kind of trapped. I think he's kind of stunned. But that's where the prog gets you. You will see... This is one of the big issues I have with this game, not having boss music. You have no idea how insanely powerful the Smoky Prog is. We started off with 100 Pikmin, we're down to 53. He just absolutely rinses through them. And because there's no real music, you have no idea that what you're facing is a scary enemy. You wouldn't really know. I'm going to throw the rest of them on him, and then I'm actually going to go and gather Demolition Squad... Oh, I've just fucking drowned someone. Demolition Squad Alpha, who were unfortunately... Well, especially not the powerful house I was expecting when they're fucking drowned. Ugh. Right, guys, come on. Right, let's launch some of these guys over to him. Right, guys, throw your new munitions. This is what I paid you for. Good, yes. One of you, at least, was able to do that. Right, second one. Come on. You kind of can get... You, see, yes, you can get him trapped against the onion like that, which is something. So we have defeated the Smoky Prog. But at what cost? We have got... 23 out of 21 Pikmin. 24 out of 21 Pikmin. Oh, something be badly wrong here. If anyone would like to comment, telling me exactly what the fuck be happening here. I am curious. Because I absolutely have more Pikmin than are on the field. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, seems unlikely. I think it may have somehow stabilized itself now. Oh, yes, it has. Well, there we go. Either way, I apparently have 10 Pikmin in my party. That also seems highly unlikely. <gasps> Did Suicide Squad survive? Also, there's apparently uh, six more members of Suicide Squad than A, there were at the start, and B, there are on the entire field. Oh, no, those three members of Suicide Squad are in addition to the 10 Pikmin I apparently possess. Hmm. Something be fucky here. Either way, with these three guys, we can show at least there is an advantage to defeating the Smoky Prog. Observe. As you can imagine, from such a troublesome enemy, the Smoky Prog rewards you significantly. The Smoky Prog will give you a full 100 Pikmin to any onion it's taken to, which is fantastic, and it means it will... Well, that's the whole thing of it. It will replenish the losses you take from it, but it will only replenish them for one Pikmin type. So, really, I should have given that to Red, because they were the ones that took it. But also, this is a burner um, account, so that's not a problem. Either way... We finished up, so I'm gonna head to sunset, and that is the end, in terms of content, of the first bonus episode. You will notice as well, a slightly creepy thing. So we've seen today, we've seen the Mamuta, we've seen the Gulix, and we've seen the Smoky Prong. Olimar himself speculates during the credits roll that the Smoky Prong is a malformed larval Mamuta, Mamuta even, which is really creepy when you think about it. 
All of our speculations and that kind of creature role we saw in the credits is basically building up to a something which became much more front and centre in Pikmin 2, which is the Piclopedia. This kind of database of creatures in the Pikmin world and like a scientific description of them plus Olimar's own like personal notes, which is one of my favourite parts of Pikmin 2, which is just not quite there yet in this game, which is why I've said it before and I will say it again. Pikmin is a great game and it lays the groundwork for Pikmin 2, which is a fantastic game. Um, because Pikmin 2 would not have existed without Pikmin 1, but Pikmin 2 is so much more. It is the same game and it is way the fuck better in so many ways. I love it. Uh, anyway, if we return to the title screen, I'm going to talk about what the next five episodes of bonus content are going to be around. Because if we press A, we have access to Challenge Mode, and we get some sweet 90s music when we fire it up. It's the Single Day Challenge Mode. How many Pikmin can you grow in a day? So you have a heavily modified version of each of the five main levels. I say heavily modified, I will go through that when we do each level. You get a full day, 13 um, minutes during which time you have to raise as many Pikmin as possible, as in literally just spawn. It doesn't matter if you pluck them from the ground or not. You just have to get the highest total possible. I've played through each of these once already on this this Wii, so we have a little total to try and beat. So the next five episodes are going to be the Impact Site, Forest of Hope, Forest Naval, Distance Spring, and Final Trial in Challenge Mode. So it's a very different way of playing the game. So, and the levels are remixed a bit. There are more and different types of enemies, so it's quite entertaining. So I hope you'll join me for the next couple of episodes. To finish up the series, we'll be playing through challenge mode and everything on every level, so thank you very much, and I hope you'll join me then. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of of the, the weird additional enemies of Mamuta, Gulix, and the Smoky Prog. Thank you very much, and good day. <laughs>